Long story short, we are going over the San Rense for those of us who are short, just joining us. Going over the San Rense and for everyone else who can now actually view this at a later date because I finally remembered to begin recording the dang thing. Players in the game, as you can see, the Siddle um, and Makisuk. Straightforward game, San Rense, that is our topic. Uh, more specifically, how to approach San Rense as white. Very important to look at. Lee Siddle, being our aggressive player we always know him to be, decided to approach immediately. And instead of pincering, as is common, and we will actually see in one of our games. So I'm not going to go over it right now. Um, oh god, I'm screwing this up horribly. So I'm not going to go over it right now. Wonderful. That just... whatever, I'm keeping it, I don't care. Uh, those of you here don't realize that I just, uh, for a few seconds, had awesome, awesome feedback. But, whatever. Uh, so instead of the pincer, we're actually seeing, instead, the one space extension. Or enclose, rather. So... A little bit weird. Some people really, really do not like playing this way. They feel that it is passive, that you are trying to gain territory here with your San Rense. Uh, they intend, they instead prefer to pincer, to try and make this sort of wall. That way we can uh, better use our influence. However, a few things to note here, if you do play this way, one, you are going to be playing in Gote. Uh, two, you do still have Aji here that you have to contend with. So it's a question of what do you want to do? Do you want some points and do you want Sente? Or do you want territory, uh, or do you want uh, influence rather in Gote? It's completely up to you. Because White has to do something. White has to either back off high or maybe take a base here. And depending on what white actually does, you can still extend from this. I mean, even from this board, for example, we can clearly see that we can keep white low. Anytime we have third line stones, for, for example, we know that we can kind of poke at those, get them to defend themselves, and take influence out of the deal. Um, if we back off high, as occurs in the actual game, we still have options available to us. I mean, we can go all the way out here to A if we want. Try to force uh, white to defend. To maybe follow up with B. That's still a nice extension. So we can still use our influence rather well. Even if we uh, play uh, Q14. It's not saying, okay, we are never going to get influence. We're not going to be able to expand our framework. No, it's just saying that we're going to be able to expand our framework in a different way. Uh, how about P16? I think that came in the other variation. What was P16? Um, Please say not for B. Oh, oh, okay, I, okay, I see what you're saying. Um, another good question. We're going to see this as well in the game that I have lined up. So, I think we will. Did I pick that game? I think I might have. I'll go over that by the end of the lecture. But I think that's in the next game. So instead, uh, white backs off high, black gets influence, so he gets to determine how he wants to continue. And he's got a whole range of different possibilities. He could, for example, try to expand clear across the board. That would be fine. Uh, he can expand to the start point if all he's interested in is expanding his San Rense. Uh, if he's not interested so much as doing that, maybe he really is more interested in playing this for territory. Uh, we might see him do something else, like approach in from the inside or approach from the outside uh, here at C14. Try to keep uh, White's framework under control. Uh, Tengen would be definitely premature. I do not like seeing Tengen almost ever. There are rare, rare instances when I like Tengen. This would definitely not be one of those cases. And for those of you who do not know 
and I'm talking to you double digit queues. Uh, those of you who might not know when to expand the Tengen uh, and when not to, you can simply go by that whole corner uh, side center rule. You can see that the sides are still open, so don't be looking in the middle. So Black says, you know what? I'm going to just expand my framework. Nice, easy move. See what Lee Settle is going to do. Now is when I start getting annoyed, because I hate San Rinse, and now, as white here, I would have to fortuse it in some fashion. So, immediately to me, because I'm impatient and a really, really bad player, I would want to think, okay, I, I want to play A and just tackle this head on. Uh, some players I've seen actually approach inside, give themselves a weak group immediately. Not a good idea. This is the, this is just impatient play that is not really a not, not really a good habit to be into, and I've learned that from experience. And you will actually see a video on how badly I learned that from experience at a later date. Uh, one question from Archaic. Uh, for Sanren say, is there a natural approach or only the counters you showed are best? Um, not really sure what you mean by is there a natural pro? Uh, you mean for white? Are you referring to here? Oh, um, yeah, it kind of depends on what your two stones were. If, let's say, this, okay, that's not, that's handicap. Uh, let's say this was um, a 3-4 instead of a 4-4. Four, four, it's perfectly valid to slap down a low Chinese. I've seen that uh, played in quite a few different games. That could be one way to deal with the framework by establishing one of your own. Um, but if we're dealing with two 4-4 four, four stones, neither of them's more interesting than the other, then, yeah, I mean, those are your only choices. You, uh, anything else, and you're suggesting playing a little bit slower, uh, you're not going for an extension or an approach, I guess you're looking for an, en uh, an enclosure off the 4-4, four, four. but, eh, I don't like that very much. I think that's a little bit too slow. Might be playable, but I think it's a bit slow. Question, is D10 possible? Yeah, you can make your own framework. I don't like that um, personally, because whenever I see my opponent doing something, I don't like trying to do the same thing when I'm already a move behind in trying to do it. I'm trying to beat your opponent at their own game when they're already ahead of you seems like a not good way to try to win. But that's a personal thing. And I'm sure it's pl probably playable. Anyway, back to the game. Uh, so... This little takes an enclosure here. Why? Because he's already got an extension for it. So why wouldn't you take it? Makes perfect sense. Um, a lot better idea than, let's say, playing A or what will soon be B. If I can read, there we go. Uh, better than playing either A or B, which are very, very impulsive. And F3? Um, I don't like F3 as much, because we see on the top of the board that our enclosure here is working very, very well with the extension that we already have. We do not have that in place with F3. F3 instead says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm getting ready to pincer your K4 stone. And you might be able to do that, but with the framework already in place on the right-hand side, I don't think Black actually minds that too much. I mean, for all you know, Black might just respond by trying to turn that into territory as well. Though I would imagine a move on the left-hand side is probably going to be uh, what is played. Then again, he might just completely say, okay, forget that, I'm going to fast expand. 
uh, my little framework here. And now what are you going to do? I mean, are you still going to try to pincer it when you're deep in enemy lines? Seems like an uh, odd choice here. All right, so let's see. We've got C14. Black follows up. White's not going to ignore. He takes his enclosure. Gives Black Sente. He's already got his extension. What is he going to play next? I'm sure many of you are immediately going to say, Play ten get. Yep, there it goes. Rabid Q does not fail. But yeah, Tengen, it is an okay move here. I you got to admit, with the way that Black is playing, Tengen's fairly large. This would be an instance where it wouldn't be a completely bad idea to play it. Y yeah, you really have to admit that. If your opponent played it, you can't say, ha ha ha, bad move, you lose now. No, no, you still have to be careful. But Black, I'm happy to say, does not play Tengen. He decides to do something a little bit more my style, the very rare uh, instances where I do play San Rensei. He tries to strengthen his framework, make it harder for uh, White to commit in. Also makes it harder to approach, because we don't have just a clear 4-4 four, four stone to, uh, to hit. Our three threes are a little bit more difficult as well. If black want, or if not black, if white wants to come in here, he's going to have to go with uh, some sort of invasion. And then it's just a question of where is that going to be. Now the downside about playing this way is you might notice that this is a little bit symmetrical. Any invasion that works on top is probably going to work on bottom. Uh, missing comments, do I have to admit that? Yes, uh, B, C, 10. Uh, interesting idea. Well, actually, all right, I'm glad you asked that. Um, two things there about uh, your suggestion of, of C, 10. One, we're playing for influence, and this is a third line stone, which says we're interested in territory. Furthermore, you know you can't make a two-space extension in either direction if you get attacked from here. So you would not actually want to do this. What your opponent's going to do instead is he's going to cap you and be happy no matter which way you try and run out. Because he's going to get more strength in the center, and we're going to find out why that can be very, very bad when we're when Black is trying to play for a uh, San Rinse. And my throat's going to crack. <clears throat> All right, so if you were going to play something like this, I would say uh, D10's already been suggested. And even beyond that, if you were really, really trying to expand that far, I'd probably have my eye more on the shoulder hit than anything else. If I really needed to play on the left-hand side, again, because we know we cannot live there locally, we're going to have to run. So we can acknowledge this area, it's not a really uh, weak area of white, it's kind of strong in the fact that it's hard to live there. So I'm going to respect that and play sente moves to get anything on the left hand side. Uh, instead, okay, we've got uh, San Rense here, white's turn, where is he going to play? <sighs> I almost don't want to click it. I almost don't want to. I almost don't want to click it. But it's Tengen. This is an instance where Tengen, again, is a reasonable move. I mean, why is it reasonable? What makes it reasonable? Well, we've got an enclosure, we've got an extension, uh, if we want to continue trying to develop it, I guess we can take it into the middle. I mean, that's, that's possible. But more than that, we can see exactly what Black is doing here. He's got San Rinse. He's already spent it on the side. The only other place for him to expand into next is in the middle. 
And keep in mind, um, yes, as Frozen Soul is mentioning, keep in mind uh, what's going on on the board here. We know that we can't approach these four four stones in the traditional sense because he's already got uh, one space on both of them. So we have to invade. If he actually surrounds this area by getting into the center, then we're invading with nowhere to go. That could be difficult. It's essentially the last large move on the board. So white takes it. One instance where set where the Tengen is in fact a reasonable move to play. But unfortunately, it's also Gote. So Black gets to continue playing whatever he wants. I mean, yeah, his his opportunity to really reduce the center. It, or not reduce center to expand into the center is a little bit is a little bit reduced. It's not completely gone yet because that one stone by itself isn't alive. If we can actually cut it off, that would be awesome. Uh, anytime we can cut off Tengen and kill it, even if you lose the game, I say you win. So we'll see if that happens here. Black builds up. Why? He's interested in influence, and he's got weak points he wishes to protect. This stone, though, is also very, very strong. I assume that we all know of um, the follow-up here. Let's say white passes. I don't know why he would, but let's just say he does. Uh, what's a really good follow-up after we have uh, F5? Alright, you're instantly hitting it. Yeah, 3-3 three, three is very, very nice. Uh, white doesn't pass, but let's say he does. This, uh, the 3-3 three, three is very, very natural here, because white doesn't really have a good response. Uh, either, you know, we're going to let black connect, which is huge, or we're going to try and deny that connection, and we're going to be made uncomfortable. Because there's no really nice way of actually handling this considering all the different ways that black can poke at you. I mean, you wind up having this really, really derpy shape that has to extend just to live. And that's not what we want to do with our walls. It doesn't really make any sense. So instead, usually what we wind up doing is allowing this to connect so we can get more influence. Because trying to prevent the connection usually just results in a giant headache. Alright, so didn't pass. He builds up. And again, great thing about uh, this game, it's very easy to follow. I mean, why is he building up? Because we can see exactly what he wants and because it's reducing black potential. He wants to expand out into the middle. He's not going to allow that to happen. And by not allowing it, he gets to take some of the left hand for himself. Indeed. All of his stones are working together. I prefer white too, but by virtue that he did not play San Rinse. So, well, right now it's small because his stones are already stronger. Um, now, one thing that's also very, very important here... Uh, oops, sorry. Most often I just use a Chinese Tsuji and leave black to cry. <laughs> nice. Uh, one thing that's important here is not to get too greedy. If we underestimate this area that white's creating, mm -hmm. if white, uh, what was it? If black, rather, underestimates the area that white's creating, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. If, for example, he doesn't try to reduce this, and he says, okay, I'm just going to keep building up my area here, and allows white to get pretty much the entire upper left-hand middle of the board, 
that's way too much. We can't just get into complete defensive mode here, which is a danger any time you're actually playing a framework. Because the minute you say you're invested in an area, it becomes really, really tempting to fight and claw and defend every piece of territory or potential territory you see yourself getting. So we're going to reduce him. White says he didn't go into my corner, so I'm going to make certain it's harder to do. Black says fine, good point. But I would really like Sente here. So he plays this just for Sente, knowing he's making bad shape. There's a ton of different peeps here, lots of Aji, but he wants to continue reducing the middle. And this becomes very, very, very important uh, later on. Uh, what would you do if Black did play C3? I'll go back to that before I end the game. And this becomes very, very important. Because these, this group that he's creating isn't part of, isn't connected to really anything. So in the back of our head, this is probably where we start having things that would be nice to do. Like, wouldn't it be nice if we somehow managed to cut this group off? Because at any time a group has to run around, then we're going to get stronger by chasing it. And if white gets stronger in the center, he's going to be able to invade wherever he wants, because he has somewhere really, really easy to connect to. So we don't know if we can do it, but that's something to recognize that we can do in case we have that option in a variation later on. So white says, you know what, I'm going to give that a shot. Can I really disconnect this? Is he really going to let me completely surround this group? Because that would be awesome. Black says, no, I really, really am not letting you do that. But like I mentioned, anytime you have a, a group running around the middle, obviously your opponent's not going to get stronger because they're going to respond to you. And every time they respond, they're going to get stronger. Now here's something that's uh, kind of weird happens. Black decides it's time to play elsewhere. Not what I expected at all. And I'm not really certain how I feel about this. Because in the back of my head, just really, really um, on a basic level, I can count to two. And I know that's generally a bad thing in a go game. It's like, oh, huh. If I can separate that, I hear that's good for me. Uh, so yeah, I would imagine that this is actually being used as a probe and... Well, I would imagine that it would be used as a probe and not as something that you're actually trying to live with. Uh, in the actual game, however, white defends corner, because we could defend this way, but... This gets a little bit difficult to handle. I mean, how are you going to actually play this off? You've almost got a completely living group here. White says no, no going into my corner for easy base. You have to go somewhere else. So black connects, or tries to connect. This is not connected by any means just yet. I mean, uh, we know that small knights can be cut. We know that large knights can be cut. So whatever this is has no connection whatsoever. We could do that, but that gets, that gets really, really dangerous when we actually try reading out the splitting attack. Because, I mean, if black decides to go this way with his splitting attack, then your stones are immediately in trouble, and you're the one under attack. And if he's getting a wall here, then your stones in the center are the ones that are about to be split and under attack. So this becomes really, really delicate. And yet, by the same idea, we don't want to simply run the two groups together, because that's a lot of lost Aji. So it's kind of hard to find a good move here. 
I mean, on first glance, we want to just crush this into the ground, but the counterattacks really start hurting us, right? I'm sure you can't follow any of that because I'm using the same marker for it all. I'll go over that in a second. Essentially what I was saying is if we do a splitting attack of some sort, and um, I'm going to ignore Aji for the moment. Let's say, for example, that we find ourselves having to like defend the top. Well, what happens when we're completely cut off from the center? We suddenly have all of these stones that are under attack, and it was supposed to be the other way around. I mean, Black was supposed to be the one in trouble, not, not us. So instead, White strengthens himself. It's like, you know what? That is a little bit odd to read. So before I split you, I'm going to make myself stronger. What are you going to do? Black says, fine, I guess I'll try and attack you. And by doing so, he gets stronger. Because he knows if he plays anywhere else, that splitting attack probably will come. And now that White's stronger, eh, kind of harder to actually get a good result there. So we're not going to do it. So right now, uh, the interesting thing about this San Rinse game is everything that's interesting isn't what I mentioned in the very beginning of the game. How, you know, we kind of just want to hit the 3-3 three, three and just kind of hate our opponent's framework into the ground. Like maybe if we just disrespect it enough, he'll lose. Or maybe we'll just approach on the inside and see if we can't just reduce it immediately. Instead, all of the interesting, uh, everything the interesting that's going on in the game is actually occurring in the center. If we can get stronger there, then we can actually go for those uh, more risky invasions that we would really like to take to uh, have take place. Yes, letting the hatred flow through you is a very, very good suggestion. Nice strategy. Uh, isn't the P17O uh, exchange bad for black other than taking Sente? Well, you don't want him to get a base. You know he's going to respond. And you know that he's already undercut as Ron Chan has just mentioned. So he's not going to get that solid base here. I mean, if this last stone was white already, then yeah, it would be kind of weird. White says it's now or never, I'm going to split you. Black says that's fine, I'm already prepared to fight this. White gets out super, super fast. Black keeps attacking. And White says, I will let it go. He's not going to get bogged down by defending the top to the point that he misses his attack, his other attack in the middle. Because at the very beginning, he could count to two. And he was able to count one and two. The top is settling. If we allow the top to settle and that middle to settle very, very easily, then something went wrong here. You'd be surprised. Don't underestimate the ability to count to two. That'll get you to Don, at least. Hmm. So, Black knows he's in trouble. He needs to get himself some shape. Hmm. Indeed, I completely agree with what I spy with my just said. So he's going after shape. 
and then white decides to light off his stones. He's strong in the middle, so he's going to begin invading. Obviously not letting him connect. Obviously not letting him connect. So he gets to live on the side. Black uh, N15 work? Um, what was N15? Uh, now it certainly does. Mm -hmm. It works, but it's Gote. We could kill off those two stones, but we're going to get invaded again if we do that. Right now, we should still be a little bit more focused on white, because he's not entirely alive on the right yet. He's almost alive. He's probably going to live with his next move. But... He's not completely there just yet. So, white Atari has to connect, and lives underneath. Alright, cool. Now white is alive. However, that's still go to to kill those stones. And if we do kill those stones, we're going to just keep getting invaded. We don't want to do that. So black kindly asks white to connect, and white says no, which is very interesting. He does not want to be forced low like this. Why doesn't he want to be forced low? What's wrong with being forced low? Why don't we want to see that here? But what could we possibly do with thickness? M12. Yeah, with thickness we can kind of sort of begin thinking that we can kill things. And that would actually be a very uh, nice example of how you could start killing things, yeah. I mean, go after two stones? No, I can go after everything, are you crazy? Well, it's a little bit more than three stones now, though. I mean, it's three stones and the territory that's, you know, all around these three stones... And that would be kind of large. So white says, I'm going to come out. Black says, and you're not going to connect ever. White's good with that. But he's still not in trouble, or not out of uh, trouble yet. If white uh, just goes back and tries to live now, he might still lose those stones. Mm -hmm. So white attaches for strength, and this is about where I'm going to end this uh, particular game. Essentially... White manages to get stronger in the middle after his invasion. Uh, but what happens in the bottom right? Um, can we actually go over that? Bottom right is actually pretty simple. I'll show you. Um, you're going to have to answer that question answered uh, pretty much immediately. Because it's Black's move, right? So he says, I'm going to kill these two stones. White says, fine, I'm going to kill your 012 stone, which is a huge stone to take. Uh, pretty much connects on up uh, 016, pretty cool. And with Sente, Black says, I'm going to make certain that you can't invade my 3-3. Because that's a... White's already got two, gr or two uh, corners. He just picked up a bunch of territory in the center by connecting up his groups, using that little wall of his very, very nicely. And uh, there's not a lot that white can do. Only thing that white can do is sacrifice. You know that, right? The 3-3 three, three here. We can play this and force uh, black to respond. And then hopefully... Um, use the forcing moves of having to keep killing off our 3 Faraji. That's all uh, white manages to do here.
But alright, that's uh, enough of this game. I have another interesting, uh, white wins. He said all wins. I mean, Lisado's position is really, really great right now. I mean, he's got strong corners, his middle is very nice, black still has this giant question of how are we settling this, hopefully it'll be answered while it's attacking these three stones. Uh, but even after that, he still has a giant question mark of are these stones strong? And if so, you know, how strong are they? What can white do to me there? So uh, white, I think, is in a really nice position. Oh, invaded, C3. Ha, good idea. I almost messed that one. Um, back, back, forward, not so forward, and that. Okay. So the question is, what do we do here? Uh, well, we are not allowing our opponent to connect up because that's way, 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 way too passive. Um, if we do play the variation, though, that I mentioned earlier, this is a little bit easier for us, even if we just play that uh, original horrible one that I mentioned. Because how is... Um, how is uh, White's position here? He still has the influence that he wanted, and he still has Sente. So now he gets to uh, take his Sente, not by having to defend himself, uh, but by expanding out with a move like G or G6, as uh, mentioned by Frozen Soul. So I don't think this would be a very good variation that White would actually enjoy. Because it seems like now we're screwed. We actually have to invade this left-hand side somewhere. I don't know a lot. Anyway, uh, I have one more game that I really want to go over. There might be another one after that, I don't know. So I'm going to close these, and I'm going to close this game and open up another one. So you can join me for that. I'm not going to read it while I'm recording. Instead, I'm just going to go in my next custom game, which opened up on my wrong monitor. Let's bring that on over. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Before I begin recording, please tell me that I actually killed the Echo from last time. All right, it looks like I did. Oh, no. That looks like I'm severely delayed by at least 10 seconds. Hmm. More than that, I'm freezing up on that, aren't I? <sighs> Don't tell me not to give this lecture over again. Twitch, why do you fail me? Alright, I guess my latency should be okay. But what I'm seeing is awful. I don't know, I'm going to look at this video later. What I'm seeing on the preview of uh, Twitch's website is just disgusting. I'm lagging all over the place. Growl. Oh well, maybe I'll give. Maybe I'll make um, do this uh, again if I have to on the uh, European time. But that aside, will there ever be more tie game games? Oh uh, yeah, there be more tie game games. I tend to do that next, actually. I have uh, another IGS game that I'm uploading now. 
uh, off my Twitch account, and after that, I intend to do some more uh, Taigemia. I don't know about tonight. Let's see, where's the game? Ah, here's the game. Alright, so these players, again, we're going with San Rinsei. And... <laughs> uh, I, I, I swear I did not know that I'd pick these players when I picked these games. Because... All I was looking at was the game itself. I was not looking at all at who played it, so it's just a happy coincidence that Black is the same person. And in one game, he went against Yi Sido, and in the other game, he's going against Yi Cheng Ho. So, that's kind of funny. I do apologize. Um... So, this game is a game in which if you saw it happen in your own games that you would probably think your opponent was trolling you massively and if it actually works as we see here you would probably just throw your keyboard out the window so by virtue of that I absolutely had to pick this game So here we have San Rensei. We do not have it twice, don't worry. Like we saw in the Seidol game, white approaches immediately, why not? No reason not to. And unlike in the Seidol's game, actually, let me get some... Alright, this game actually was played before the Seidol's game. So in, in this one, instead of uh, backing off, Black plays uh, the diagonal, which I think was asked in last game, and I didn't get to it because it was uh, popping up here. The trouble with this is usually diagonal moves are regarded as a little bit slow. I mean, uh, if you see, for example, you approach your opponent low on 3-4 and they back off, you know that you probably don't actually have to respond to that. You can go off and do something else. You can approach from a different angle if you want. I mean, you can do a lot of different things because you you have almost no amount of pressure actually being applied to you. I mean, the only thing less severe that could possibly be played against you would either be just backing off two space or maybe playing a small knight. Uh, it is solid, that's true, but your stone's in not a lot of danger. It's going to be fine. So Black says, you know what? Uh, I'm going to approach you again and see what you do. Or Yi Cheng Ho does that. Whoever white is. So, no, we don't see symmetry. We see the, the move that everyone expects to see. We see the pincer. Because there's the wall, everyone always asks about it. You know, what if your opponent actually, you know, makes a wall here? Yes, KGS style. And if you do play this, I expect everyone here to know this variation. It's my favorite. Pushing up instead of pushing down. I love the amount of odd that creates. I never, ever, 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 ever play this anymore. Because I just love how much odd how much extra odd you're actually creating here. I mean, there is some variations that might trick you up if you haven't uh, seen it before. But overall, it's pretty straightforward. Black usually is going to push through, you're going to block, and then we're going to have this. Now, here is where things can get a little bit tricky. Uh, some aggressive players won't Hane. They'll connect, thinking, I've got you now. But now, you don't have to worry about the San Rinsei. You're going to have a group right where you want a group that he can never really counterattack. You're going to make shape right here where he wants influence. So, whatever, you can, uh, if you're strong here, you can invade if you want. You have M4 for Sabaki. Um, true. Instead, it's much more reasonable to just take your influence. Your opponent's got to take the stone. You're going to Atari. He's going to take the stone and defend the cut point. 
Now, the reason why I like this is because there's so much extra Aji with this cut point that it's just ridiculous. A crazy move like R7, which you would think is just downright insane, is actually pretty reasonable now, because if you're not careful, you're going to have a ko on your hands that you don't want to fight if you are black. Instead, white backs off. But really quickly, let's show the ko. Let's say, let's say he decides to keep you in. Something that looks entirely reasonable and makes your move look like it is just a flat-out overplay. Well, then you cut, and now what's going to happen? Nothing good. There's no good answer to this. I mean, this way you're fine. Um, if we Atari here, okay, we can Atari the stone, then what? I guess we're going to take, okay, now what? That's connected very, very well. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Uh, if we do Atari that and we descend, it's that happy ko I was referring to, which Black does not want. He never wants to see this, ever. I mean, White's completely alive, so this is just a ko to completely screw over Black. That's all that you're doing here. This is a picnic coat for white. KGS 5Ds play this? Oh my god, they must hate winning. That's crazy. Unless you know that you have like a billion and a half co threats, ugh, it's not a good idea. All right, so white backs off. It's now black's move. And we've got a couple of different options here. We could again go with what I mentioned and we could approach, make certain that white can't get that uh, enclosure with his extension because as uh, already mentioned, or as we actually saw in the last game with Lee all, that went pretty well for him. We can try and expand, but we are undercut, so that's a little bit more difficult to do. So instead, black is going to be really straightforward. He says, I'm interested in influence, so bam, I'm taking more influence. If you defend yourself, I'm going to keep jumping out, and I'm going to get a lot more influence. And that's pretty much what white does. He says, I'm going to connect myself, because I don't want you to cut my stone off, obviously. So black says, fine, I will extend halfway across the board. Why not? No reason not to, right? You're after the influence. Oh my god. True, we're after influence. And White's going to respond because he doesn't mind the territory. Black's super aggressive. Tries to squeak out as much influence as he can. And now here's where things get interesting. Instead of just developing that uh, middle, Black decides that he's going to give Sente to his opponent by invading his 3-3. Because 3 the reason it doesn't have to be Sentai if you don't want it to be. White is going to have an option to go and do something else. So he defends himself. And White says that's enough. I'm not giving you Sentai here. I'm going to take it and do something else. Now, that does mean, yes, Black can obviously Atari here later on. That's just the exchange you make for Sentai. And you have to be certain that whatever you're about to play is completely worth it before you do it. You wouldn't, for example, want to play S4 or something slow like that, or maybe, I don't know, something a bit more reasonable. Uh, Q18 or R17, these are probably not good uses of Sente. But instead, White says, I'm going to reduce your framework. So you, I'm going to hit that lovely little point that we all know is there now. Now this is why I so, so love that push-up. Because this is not 
this is this is just a probe. This is not an overplay at all. There is a solid connection here. So the question is, what are we going to do? How are we going to possibly respond to this as black? Because we want to just keep this in and, you know, crush his face. But we can't do that. We've got to do something to make sure he can't connect. So there's no aiding any stones or keeping him in or anything like that. Um, S4 might be okay if, uh, eh, I suppose S4 is a, re a reasonable, uh, response. Black goes with, uh, this that protects cut as well as puts a little bit of pressure on white. I, I imagine they're both okay. Still denies connection. White can't respond to this in the traditional sense. If he just extends right now, then he's probably going to die. He's actually got to do something else. So the question is, okay, you knew that you had that first move there. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? How are you going to make this stone look like it wasn't played just to disrespect your opponent? P8, play lightly. All right, I love that you have playing light on your mind. You know that if you make yourself heavy while you're behind enemy lines, you're going to die. That's good. Uh, S10, points for Ranchan. Yeah, White's going to say, I guess I'll try and live here. Why not? And this is partially why I stopped playing San Rinse, because things like this happen to me a lot. It's like, you know, I really want to try and develop this into a huge framework, but living back there seems a little bit too easy. And what Yi Cheng Ho does here, it seems like... It really seems like it shouldn't work. But it so does. Black responds nice and strong. It's like, no, you're not going to live here. If you pull back, it's not enough room to live. If you go forward, you're cut. Nothing good's going to happen to you here. So, white goes forward, apparently not getting that memo. Black cuts. Like, you, you can't do anything here. This is going to die. This is... you're dead. Uh, this is from 2008, so this is when... This is pretty new, Li Cheng, though. More, a uh, bit of a more aggressive version. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He did go through a period when he was kind of trying to switch his styles, and he was losing so much. Yeah, yeah, that's that was so sad. But it was actually it was sad, and it was cool at the same time. Uh, it's sad that that happened, but some of the games in which you saw them figure out his style was really awesome. It was made for some really great fighting games. I, I still go uh, back and go over those. So White cuts. Doesn't clamp, doesn't clamp, doesn't clamp. That, that's, that's crazy. If you clamp... Then you're saying, I'm really trying to live on the second line. Uh, cutting, that makes things complicated. And that's exactly what Li Chengho wants right here. Because, you know, there's no ladder. Uh, if you push, uh, I don't really know where that's going. So, Black makes himself stronger, right? Doesn't want himself to die. But he can connect. Black can. And here is where it goes. We can probably already see where this is going. It's like, wow, there's entirely too many forcing moves here. Is black, uh, or sorry, is white going to live on the second line? No. No, 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 no. What we're going to do is we're going to force black to take all of this framework and make it second line territory. Yeah. That's a great plan. I, I I like that plan. I like that plan a lot. 
So white says no, or black says no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and make as much as I can here. Black says, I've got a million forcing moves. This is awesome. I'm gonna get so much shape here. Pushes forward. Again, just sacrificing our stones. Getting our use out of them. Creates cut points. Trying to resist. Maybe we can fight through and kill most of this. That'd be, that'd be great for white. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, here. Has to connect, obviously. Has to connect. Uh, there's a cutting stone here. But... That P13 stone is really, really important. Because if you let that stone go, what about your stones as black here in the middle? What about these stones? This is, this is a problem. This, this is definitely a problem. So black has to quickly try and connect, otherwise he's gonna, you know, let white through, and that's gonna be horrible too. Now he's got the cutting points that he's got to watch out for. Black white gets to go back and save. So again, we've got uh, forcing move because we don't want to lose those stones. Sure, we lost the three, but the three in the center are ripped apart and I've said it a million times I'll probably say it a million times more rather than the San Rinse, this is how I love getting getting influence not just you know the whole I'm gonna play three Gote stones in the middle and you know hope I can build off it but these really awesome fighting exchanges that you never saw coming I mean could you imagine in a San Rinse game that white is the one with influence across half the board that's a little bit unusual, but it's really, really cool to see. Because I mean, I bet almost everyone back here, when Atari on, on uh, here, would have just probably connected. Been like, okay, I have, I have to connect that. He's gonna go back and do something. Uh, maybe play here, or not. That's that's really stupid. That no, no, ignore that. Uh, maybe here or whatever. And now you might not be able to do that. And now you're going to have these, this weird group in the center that I guess is just going to make an extension and hope it doesn't die. But no, instead we have this really great cut through. And Black's little lonely stones that we're trying to extend. What? Oh, they just have to live, I guess. Tries to poke through, says that ain't happening. Black follows up a little bit. Forces white to connect. And ensures that he doesn't get uh, completely surrounded. So now it's white's move. He gets to decide how he's going to try and profit off of all of that. How? Who knows? He decides to do it this way. No, he didn't. I just made a mistake. Sorry, he decides to do it this way. Bye-bye, game tree. Got you right the first time. Oh, well. Um, C10? Uh, almost, but not quite. Simpler move. He just extends. The left is never getting into the middle. It's all he needs to do. Make sure it's not going to connect. And suddenly it's back on to black. How are you going to respond to all of this? Because he can't... He has to reduce that center. That center is threatening to get extremely large. On the bright side, however, if he does actually manage to pull off a nice shape in the middle, He's got a massive amount of territory on the right-hand side. So, he does have a lot of points. Mm, he does have a lot of points that he can fall back on. So he says, alright, I'm going to do just that. I'm going to make some shape here. No problem. 
light strengthen himself a bit. You're probably wondering what the purpose of that was. Well, that's a really good question. There's some Aji here. There's a probing move, but there's also a little bit of Aji with the cuts. I mean, this is Sente. This has to be pushed down. I don't think it's really going to do much yet, but eh, it's there. Yeah, a lot of Ko's, that's true. So, Sente, he goes and attacks the center. Creates a cutting point. <clears throat> now, Black has to decide how he's going to defend. Before defending, he decides to find out if there's any Aji here. There's a lot of it. So he connects this way. He figures that between, not that, between this forcing move uh, and the wall he's getting here, he can definitely connect all this up. He's going to be fine. No problems. Let me see if that's true or not. Probe. I'm thinking at this point they might have actually been in Bioyomi. So there's some uh, very unusual moves to see played right now. Unless it was for uh, time. Sadly, I have absolutely no idea what the time settings were for this game. But, so far so good. You got exactly what you wanted. Uh, white defending. So black makes some shape. White says that's not good enough and cuts. Now we've got a problem here. But black does get to come in a little bit. Not enough for that though, I don't think. He's being really, really aggressive. He's trying to essentially turn this entire game into getting shaped by attacking these uh, cutting stones. which might actually work if he's not careful. I mean, you can see uh, white constantly, or black constantly trying to uh, surround him. Because as long as white is the one who has to live, then black's going to be fine. Black doesn't have enough time to go back and uh, attack him if white's the one in trouble. Uh, yes, Archaic? Alright, so shores up that, cuts through, gets to connect, forcing moves, very important forcing moves, he's getting stronger from all of this, ladder doesn't work but it wasn't meant to, it was just meant to get that stupid attack off of him, and back onto the center black groups where it belongs. Very important. If he had just jumped out uh, like a more uh, submissive player, then Black would get to jump out, and he'd be thrilled to death, because he has all that territory on the right. The top was reduced a bit, not nearly as scary as it could have been, and Black would be strong everywhere. So at that point, it would be a very difficult game for White. But with that group still weak, then uh, it's going pretty well. Going pretty well. It's forcing move. Move I hate. Yeah, they must be in uh, Bioyomi. Stalling for time. Now here is a really, really good... Uh, a really important move, sorry. I mean, normally when we see this, 
we're usually just completely thrilled to just back off high. Because the amount of solid territory that we're going to get from this is more than enough. But what's more important is this. These two groups and the fact that maybe we can push around white a little bit. So white doesn't want to happen, that to happen. He's still interested in that center. So he decides to pincer and see what black is going to want to do. Black reapproaches. And white stops responding. Because he's not interested in dealing with this corner right now. He's interested in dealing with that middle group. And with his last move, he is ensured, if we draw that happy little imaginary line of doom here, that I'm not getting straight at all, just something like that, I guess. Whatever. We can see that black is behind enemy lines. And yet he's playing away from that group. So, obviously we're going to cap it. Black has to not die here. That would be bad. But white's pretty strong, so if that's actually going to be... Uh, don't know if that's going to happen. He takes a slight risk by cutting. Mm-hmm. White responds. Now we could honey again. But you have to be absolutely certain you read this correctly. Times Suji. He decides it's not going to work. White keeps him in. Threatens to connect. White keeps him in. And now it's the moment of truth. What are you going to do? Are you going to continue pushing? Or is that what you're going to try and do? If you do, what happens when uh, White plays the Hane and then cuts you? He's going to be able to um, go back and play H10. That's, that's going to work. So he tries to get out this way. Black said, White says, nope, all of your Aji was here. Attempts to connect. Black, white says, all right, um, I guess you can do that. You can have my stones. That's fine, if you really want them. Go capture those. I don't mind. Unfortunately, even though it's a dead shape, there's nothing else he can do. He has to capture them. He has to capture them and make another eye. Or enlarge this to the point where it's not going to be a dead shape anymore. So, White says, that ain't ever happening. I'm going to force you to capture this, and you're going to like it. And then I'm going to poke out the only other place you can possibly get another eye. At this move, no choice, and Black resigns. Because he has to capture that, he's never getting another eye, he's not enlarging the space to do so, and he's not breaking out. And there's nothing weak to attack. So this game I thought was interesting. It showcased a few different things that I like. The Aji in the lower right, and why I so always play this instead of going and uh, playing uh, the Descent. Why that Aji right there is very, very formidable. Um, let's see... Can you look at my question? Sure, what question? Um, wouldn't black be better off poking into the line and reducing than saving 12 points? Uh, USF at 130. Uh... When did you ask that? I'm, I don't have any concept of when things happened. A few moves ahead when white capped. Or, you mean behind then? So here. Oh, you mean give up all of this? Hmm. That's 
kind of large. This is this is more than 12 points. There's no way you're going to be able to reduce this to just be 12 points. Yeah, and he's not going to just meekly defend either. I mean, the best, the absolute best you could do is hope for some passive variation like this. It's probably not going to happen. I mean, this would be really, really great. I mean, we can just go and get all nice and strong and force him to defend and take the bottom. But no, your opponent's going to, he's going to attack you. He knows better than to do that. He might respond to you once. And after that, you'll probably start either threatening to cut you, or just cut you immediately, or come back and split you here and make things horribly complicated. And then you're once again this group that's struggling to live in the area. Anyway, um, I think someone else had a question. Uh, would you consider R6 Chinese to see you bad? R6 Chinese... Ooh, that one. That didn't work. Why not? Oh, uh, move tool. Yeah. Um, I can't make up my mind about that to Suji. I really can't make up my mind about that. You say that you're always playing it here now? Is that what you said earlier? <laughs> yeah, I can see why. It does, it does. I guess it's all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he's asking about what happens if you're going to play here. What's the most natural response? You're going to attach, and um, hmm. Well, the question is, what are you going to do then as white? Um, wait, what? Can you show it? Oh, 04 high. Oh, you're going through the sequence. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm going through this. Or, no, not that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, R4... Yeah, and then R3, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Because see, just from here, it looks like I shouldn't be getting a bad result as black. I mean, just looking at this right now, it's like, okay, he's in two places at once. There's no way that this could work. Yeah. I don't know, maybe... I don't think there's a result that... Uh, Anyway. Yeah, R9 is the, is the annoying part. Because if you want, if you respond to it, you're going to get reduced. And you don't want to get reduced. But if you do respond to this... then he's kind of sort of just upset you. Because now he's got a little bit of Aji to work with.
there's really no good response to what happens when he cuts you. Uh, no, not two hours. We've kind of gone over. I haven't really paid attention to the time. I'm really bad with time. Uh, sure. Mm-hmm. That's something you don't want to do because then you're just gonna get you're just gonna be reduced. Yeah, but in the Sanrin state, that'd be so bad. You just keep getting pushed through. But if you don't, then you're in trouble. Yeah, you're in trouble regardless. Mm-hmm. If you're playing the Sandrin say this is definitely not something that you'd want to see, ever. Black is not happy. <laughs> anyway, uh, since you since it was pointed out that uh, since you have pointed out that it, we have gone over uh, time, I think I will go ahead and end the lecture here. Depending on the quality of the video, which I am kind of terrified to actually go back and watch, I might be giving this lecture again at some point, probably a uh, better time for Europeans sometime later in the week or on the weekend or something. I don't know. I'll have to see just how choppy this video is actually recorded. And if I have to do it again, then I won't use Twitch for that. I'll just record it locally and then upload it. But we'll see how that works. Uh, in the event that I'm not giving this lecture over again, then there will be another one a week after next, like always, at the same time. I'm not entirely certain what the topic is going to be for that yet. I can't quite decide. I have a few of them that I'm thinking about. So we'll either be going over... Yep, no problem. So we'll either be going over a uh, couple of professional games, or... We'll go over a set topic, though. Yeah, I can't really decide on which one I want to do. Cause I, I thought about um, doing a whole series like this, like how to respond as white to the sat to uh, Sandrine, say how to respond as white to Orthodox, or maybe one of the Kobe or one of the uh, Chinese variations. I'm not really certain which one I want to do next, though. Since I do know that I am in fact going to be touching on both of them eventually. Uh, if you want to go ahead and send in games that you've played as white where you couldn't quite figure out how to deal with either um, Orthodox or Chinese variations, you can certainly do so and email them to me as usual at sakariazumindernet.net. Feel free to do so. Uh, not sure when I have the lecture, but you can go ahead and start sending those in anyway. Um, I think that about covers it, though. So I'll put up the topic when I figure out what it is, and I will see you all a week after next. So, till then, take care. Enjoy lots of go, and remember, if you can count to two, then you too can...